Amen. Amen. Can everybody hear me out there? All right. Well, we're going to go ahead and get started this morning because uh, we want to try to get everybody in and out of the sun before it gets too hot. But this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just come to you right now, Lord, with humble hearts and humble minds, Lord, just thanking you for this day that you have given to us. Lord, we thank you for this beautiful weather and a time for us to come together and be able to fellowship and love on one another. Lord, we just ask that you just continue to be with each and every last one of us throughout the further part of this day, Lord, that you may get all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. For all these things we ask and count it done in Jesus' name we pray. May the people of God say, Amen. We will now have our spiritual reflection by our brother Ken Coles. Good morning. And God said, come to me with all your weaknesses, physical, emotional, or spiritual. Rest in the comfort of my presence, remembering that nothing is impossible with me. Pry your mind away from your problems so that you can focus your attention on me. Recall that I am able to do immeasurably more than all you asked or imagined. Instead of trying to direct me to do this and that, seek to attune yourself to what I'm already doing. When anxiety attempts to wedge its way into your thoughts, remind yourself that I am your shepherd. The bottom line is I am taking care of you. Therefore, you should fear nothing. Rather than trying to maintain control over your life, abandon yourself to my will. Though this may feel frightening and even dangerous, the safest place to be is in my will. Let us look at the first chapter of Luke, verse 37, and it reads, for no word of God will ever fail. Amen. And church, God wants us to know that because his word will never fail, that we can always come to him. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Amen, amen. We want to thank Brother Coles for that reading. Now, if you remember what he said, the scripture said that God never fails. Now, as we go into our prayer of confession, let us turn to the Lord. And as we pray, uh, uh, let us keep in mind that we're merely just human beings. We are created in his image. But just because we're created in his image does not mean that we can do what he does. So let us look to the Lord as we go into this prayer of confession. Dear Lord, we just come to you right now, Lord, with humble hearts, Lord, just asking you right now, Lord, to forgive us of any of our sins or transgressions that we may have committed this week. Lord, we try so hard to be a good people, Lord, but sometimes that does not always happen the way we set out for it to do. But Lord, we know that right now that because of who you are, we have a Father that is great and so merciful that he can forgive us for those sins and transgressions. Lord, we thank you for all these things that you have done for us, Lord, and for redeeming us back unto the Father. Now, Lord, we just ask right now that you just continue to show us the way and love on us as we love on you. For all these things we ask and count it done in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen.
now today. Our message is going to be coming from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 3 and 4. Again, that is 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 3 and 4. And the word of the Lord is read as thus. But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, those whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe least the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. May the Lord add a blessing to his red word. Now, I don't have an alternate version for that this morning because it's pretty much plain. Um, but uh, we're going to take a look at this text. And I just want you to know that, and y'all may have figured it out by now, that Paul is probably uh, my favorite apostle. And that is because of his conversion, his complete turnaround. And I don't know about you, but I kind of see myself in Paul's light. But... It is here in this chapter that he talks about the light that shines out of darkness. So he is talking about Jesus Christ and how we are persecuted. But it is over in the following chapter, chapter 5, where he says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. But see, what we need to understand is that that is a catch-22. And what I mean is that it says, if. It says, if any man be in Christ. And so the thing is, is that we have a lot of people professing.